Hello my beautiful people and welcome to your tarot reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant, also known as the Love Seer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're doing well, feeling safe and feeling blessed because you are. So let's go ahead and get started on your reading. Please remember to take what resonates and leave what does not. I'm going to do the cards in, a, in an interesting way this time around, all right? Just to, let's let's change some things up here. Let's spice in, spice in some things up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. What is the message for someone out there? What is the message for someone out there? Oops. What is the message for someone out there? Oops. Okay, we got one. Number four, that is the house card. The house card could talk about like a literal house. Thoughts paired with number six, which is the cloud. Let's see if we can get one more. Yep, we did. 28 is the house. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's start with the house. Like I was saying, it could represent a literal house that maybe you are connected to. It could even represent a building, a place, an establishment, a property. The house car could even talk about uh, the real estate industry, right? Land and property. The house card could also talk about a family unit. Families live in a house, right? Let's go ahead and clarify this house. Well, 27, that's the letter. There could be some sort of document or paperwork, okay? Clarify number four, which is the house. Okay. Clarify number four, which is the house. 16. Sixteen is the star, wish fulfillment. Could also be and then bad health. So yes, the star card is here. This could talk about dreams coming true, wishes being granted. It's like a wish, you know? Uh, make a wish, then it comes to life. Then you have bad health. Hmm. Yeah, you have change. I just saw something here. Okay, when I say just saw something, I have visions, I'm a seer. It's like watching TV, then you see a scene, okay? The scene that I saw, your wish has come true. It looks like you are connected to some sort of property. This could be a house that you're going to buy. Uh, this could be a property, okay? This could be an inheritance. This could be a purchase. This could be a business deal. Maybe you are in the in the real estate industry. This could be a family matter. Maybe you have a relative who left you property. Take it how it resonates. But uh, I see people trying to make a decision without you being present. There's, uh, there's There are people trying to pretty much take advantage of the fact that you are not present to make a decision. So they they want to be the one to make the decision since you are not there, which is why you have bad health. Something has come to life for you. This could have been something that you prayed for, something you wished for. God has granted you your heart's desire. But look, bad health. Okay. Then you have change. I, I do feel like, and then here's here's an, another thing that I'm seeing. It's like two, two forces here, two people here, or two parties, and they're fighting with each other because one party 
wants something to happen and maybe the other party wants something else to happen like they're clashing two parties that are connected to this house they're fighting why did the change card show up let me see change child child change and then child the child card could represent an actual child i mean if you think about it we're all children we all have parents right we are all children of god um the child card could also represent innocence naivety inexperience child false person child <laughs> then the messenger card shows up in the reverse okay child Eighteen, the dog, loyalty, commitment. The dog represents someone who's loyal, honorable, in character. And then you have journey. You're about to step into a situation that is much bigger than you can possibly imagine. Because, it, you know... It's almost like you're going to have to mediate between these two people, actually. You are the one bringing in the change. Okay? I can tell you this, that these two parties who I saw fighting, neither of them are innocent. You see false person? That's deception. So one party is going to pretty much make themselves look like something that they're not. They're going to try to trick you, okay, or deceive you in some way. The other party likes to lie. You have the birds, okay, number 12. The bird is all about communication. Birds symbolize messages. Birds are messengers. In the reverse, there's someone's lying, So someone's going to be deceiving you, okay, making something look like what it isn't, hence false person. And the other person's going to be lying. And here you are stepping into this chaotic situation as the dog. You are a person who is honorable. You have integrity. You're loyal. You're supportive, trustworthy. That is what number 18, the dog, is. You're stepping in, journey. You're about to enter this picture here, but I do believe that you are the change that is needed or changes are needed, and you are the one who is going to implement these changes. Tell us more. You have 32, which is the moon. Okay. When you see the moon, it represents things that are hidden. So something that hasn't come to light yet. Many times the moon says, use your intuition or even greater, use your discernment in order to uncover what is hidden, in order to uncover the truth. 32. Tell us more about this house. Okay. Then you have 29 which is lady number one. Lady number one always reminds me of like a queen of cups. Hmm. The moon, lady number one, and then the privileged lady. The privileged lady is a woman of affluence. She's wealthy. 
in the booklet, she's described as someone who is lavished in the finest clothes and jewelry. Again, number 29 shows up. It just did seconds ago. All right, so there's a woman here, a very beautiful woman. Perhaps she is wealthy. Um, she's in that she's in that lady number one um, kind of energy. And like I said, lady number one tends to remind me of like the queen of cups. She may have this very soft, gentle, like a delicate side to her. Um, you're stepping in. I do believe that this is you in your feminine energy. I do, whether you're man or woman, this is you in your feminine energy. But I just want to know more about the situation and give you the backstory of this so that you'll know whether or not this is your reading. Now, 29 is lady number two. I'm going to cover her up. I always forget to draw clothes on her. <laughs> but lady number two um, is someone who is uh, more so passionate right? Lady number two always reminds me of like a queen of wands energy. Okay. What if I told you this? What if I told you that you are both lady number one and lady number two? Remember how I said you have two parties and they're fighting with each other? One, like one party wants something to go one way. The other party wants something to go another way. When you step into the situation, I don't know if you're going to have to mediate this because um, one party, okay, and I'll tell you this, they are drastically different. We can even use the colors blue and red, okay? One party is more so like the color red. If you think of the color red, they're passionate, they're ambitious, fiery, determined, Okay, the other party will see the other party is blue. When you think of the color blue, blue is like a cooler, cooler sort of color, right? Maybe calm. Um, it's more of a, um, it's a lighter color. It's a calmer color. And, and, and yeah, there's just a lot of calmness here. So one is very fiery. The other is very calm. Um, one is assertive, okay, very assertive. Maybe the other is a little bit passive, all right, or laid back, we'll say. Maybe one is, is, is like extroverted, the other is introverted. Maybe even one likes, you know, conflict and drama and the other more so prefers peace, okay. Um, but yes. But yes, that is, so when you step in, like for example, when you talk to, you know, the red, right? The, the, the party that is red, that because that's how we're going to distinguish them, you become lady number two. But when you talk to the party that's blue, you become lady number one. Okay. 22 is the stairway. The stairway. Okay. The stairway is all about a choice, a choice, a choice. And I, and I, I bet you both parties are trying to pretty much convince you to choose them to do things their way. Yep. 19 is 19 is the uh, the tower, and the tower represents institutions, corporations. Hmm. Institutions, corporations, you know, this big organizations. Okay, I wonder if it's two different companies. Six, a lack of clear, of, okay, cloud, 29. I feel like that's what it is. Let me see here, the tower, clarify the tower, unexpected income. 
So you're connected to this tower here. Is this some sort of company or business that you're working for? Maybe you are the business owner. Yeah, official person, you're connected to this tower. The official person is like a professional. You would see them in a suit and tie or uniform. You probably work for this company or this business or this organization, okay? Take it how it resonates or this institution. Um, yeah, you're definitely connected to this, this organization here is what we'll just call it. But, but the thing is, you have a decision to make when it comes to how you're going to operate in this organization. Are you going to be more so red or blue? What approach are you going to take here? Okay, because courtship is all about coming together. What, what, it's like it has to do with some of the things that you're going to do in this organization. Number six is the cloud, a lack of clarity. Okay, let's look more. Holy Spirit, what is it that we're not seeing? The cloud. Hmm. Forty is the mask. Didn't I say it? You have two parties or two forces. Of course, there is a force behind these parties. I feel like the red one, right? Very bold, fiery, passionate, ambitious. They are more so of the sun. You see how you have the two faces on the mask? The sun, this has to do with your approach. I wonder if God is like preparing someone here for some sort of important role that they're going to end up playing, like a leadership role, influential role. And God could be teaching you temperance. Having that perfect balance between the red and blue. Could that be what it is? Ah. Courthouse. 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 See how this judge is holding a document in his hands? Wait a second. That is what it is. So the courthouse shows up, which is talking about legalities or contract. Then 15 is the bear. The bear is someone who's powerful, strong, nurturing, and influential, especially in the business world. That's, that's what the booklet says about the bear. So I feel like you're actually being prepared for something here. Now that I think about it, remember earlier where I was like, you're both of those feminine cards, like you came out as you're both lady one and lady two. I feel like it's temperance that, hold on. Let me see here. Let me tell you the definition of temperance. Let me see here. One second, you guys. You know, I was watching, what, what, what was that movie that I was watching a while ago? Um, I think it was Gladiator that I was watching part one because, you know, part two is coming up. Um, and there was a scene in that movie where the emperor's son, who was really supposed to inherit the throne, but the emperor had not chosen his son to um, inherit the throne. And the son knew that it was because he lacked the four, it's called the four cardinal virtues. And... These are very important virtues that every leader 
okay, should have according to uh, a philosophy, Greek, uh, Greek and Roman, uh, or yeah, Greek, um, uh, bear with me, you guys, <laughs> Greek philosophy, okay, according to Greek philosophy, these are the four cardinal cardinal virtues that every leader should have. And it's, I just looked it up again. It's wisdom, it's justice, it's fortitude, and temperance. Temperance is defined as the practice of self-control and moderation and avoiding extremes. Extremes. So you really want to be in between, right? Even there is a temperance card in the tarot card, by the way. That's where you see the angel pouring out of the two cups. It might come out in this reading. The practice of self-control and moderation and avoiding extremes. So you don't really want to be red all the time, right? It, 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 if you ask me, I feel like it just depends on the circumstance. It's like, it's like, just being in the middle, right? Knowing how to balance yourself. The practice of self-control and moderation and avoiding extremes. You don't want to be in that red energy 24-7. A leader who is always, constantly, consistently passionate, ambitious, right? Determined. They tend to carry uh, strong desires. And when we are carrying strong desires, we tend to do reckless things to get what we want. And that's how we end up stepping on people's toes, taking advantage of people and forming enemies. That's how you'll, you'll have your own people betraying you because you have betrayed them. It just never ends well. But then you also, you also don't want to be in that blue energy 24 seven all the time. Um, because you don't want to be seen as a passive leader, one that can be controlled or even easily manipulated. You see, it's like no, no when it when it is time for peace, and no when it is time for war. You, you know what I mean? Does somebody know what I'm talking about? Like this is this is very very powerful here. And now I'm like that. There was no way that was a coincidence when I watched that movie. It's Gladiator Part 1, and there's a big scene about it. The Four Cardinal Virtues is, is what it's called. And I, I do believe, let me see. I do believe, let's see who came up with this. It's Plato. Yeah, this is like Greek philosophy. Wow. Wow. Anyways, I feel like God is like preparing someone here, teaching, training someone how to have balance. It's all about balance. Knowing when it's time for war, knowing when it's time for peace temperance. It's also heavily about your approach in life, how you approach things. Many times in life, it's not, it's not what you do, but it's rather how you do it. The energy, the force behind what you are doing. If you pay attention, I also believe that God has been showing you examples of either kind of leader. You may have even met someone or met people who represented those two energies. You may have seen someone who's in a position of power 
or a leadership role who is predominantly in that red energy and what ended up happening to them. You may have seen them be, be caught up in a lot of conflict, drama, chaos, war. Okay, then you may have seen, you know, an example of someone in a leadership position who's constantly in that blue energy. And what did you see? Right? What, what did you see from that individual? What was the result of that? Because I feel like God is showing you a lot of things here. If you're really paying attention, all of this has to do with you. You're the chosen one. God is preparing you for a very important role and position. This has to do with you. Mm, wow. Hmm. It's you. It's your, it's like you're, he's training you. Okay, look at despair. And then look at imprisonment. What's going on here? Despair, imprisonment. Then you have gift. It has to do with a blessing, a wish fulfillment, a prayer being heard and answered. You know, we're all familiar with the scripture that says, ask and you shall receive. But just know that God will never give you a blessing unprepared. So yes, ask and you shall receive if you have faith, if you truly believe. But I hope you're also willing to be prepared. I hope you're willing to uh, go through the preparation. Okay. I hope you're willing to go through the preparation because it's like a job. You can have all these big dreams about your, your dream job, but you have to get the qualifications first. Okay. You have to be qualified because you don't want to get in a job position unqualified and then you end up sabotaging yourself or another person ends up taking advantage of you. Okay, it has to do with the blessing. Number nine is the gift. You're struggling with this though. I have to be honest with you. Maybe you're not understanding what's going on in your life. I always tell people it's always more about you in this life. It's always more about you than the other person. We are each on our individual soul journey. God will even use people to teach us lessons. Okay, but if you're always so focused on what the other person's doing, you think you can do no wrong and, you know, always trying to focus on others. It's always about you. You're struggling with this chapter of your life. You have despair and imprisonment. I feel like you're beating yourself up. You're misunderstanding something here. God is transforming you. Number eight is the coffin. This is about you and not the other people. Number eight is the coffin, transformation. This is about you. God is shaping, molding, and transforming you. And one of the lessons that he's teaching you is temperance. Every powerful leader must learn or must have temperance. It's about you. 29, lady number one, okay? That's number 29 is the second time it shows up. And then look at this, 14 is the fox trickery. So I do believe that there was some sort of soulmate, right? And I'm using that word very loosely. And you guys should be very careful as well when it comes to who you consider your soulmate. If you think someone's your soulmate, that means the two of you are alike on a soul level. So if you have a soulmate who likes to lie, cheat, cause drama, manipulate, then are you saying that you are that way? 
<laughs> as well, you know, a soulmate, someone who's your match, someone who is like you on a soul level. Do you carry the same spirit as that person before you start calling them your soulmate? But anyways, you guys know what I mean. I do feel like there's someone who God sent into your life and you were just supposed to learn from them. It's almost like you were supposed to just learn from what that person experienced because that person actually represents uh, what happens when you don't have temperance. And I just said it a few minutes ago. You definitely saw someone who may have even been in some sort of leadership role or position, but they 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 don't have temperance. They're more so on the extreme side. Okay, they're not in the middle of red and blue. They are red. And maybe you maybe God had even sent you a second person who's also not in the middle of red and blue. They are blue. And what ended up happening? I feel like the person who's more so in that red, they're fiery. They're constantly in that red energy. The fiery, the passion, the ambition, the strong desire consistently, continually. This person always is always fighting for something, right? They always want to win. They always want to conquer. They're represented by, look, the fox. The fox represents what? trickery and deceit this is very dangerous actually this is what happens when a person is carrying such strong desires that they start cheating tricking and deceiving to get what they want the fox trickery and deceit trickery and deceit see it's dangerous and it's very concerning it's like when you are so desperate to get what you want you know you just carry such too much passion too much too much lust too much ambition it's strong desires to the point where now you're tricking and deceiving to get what you want this is what happens to a lot of people who end up in a position of power they start to feel as if they are invincible. And when they want something, they demand it. And when they go to get what they want, they're bound to step on someone's toes. They're bound to hurt someone, exploit someone, cheat someone, compromise someone. Be careful. God is teaching you through others is what it looks like. Pay attention. Not every person who God sends in your life is your soulmate. Not everything has to be romantic. As a matter of fact, be very careful with that sort of romanticizing everything. Because it could very much be the devil's way of distracting you from seeing the bigger picture and learning the real lesson that God is teaching you. These lessons, pretty much your elevation, your progress, your prosperity, you getting your wish fulfillment is determined by how much you are learning from God. If you're not learning anything, he's not going to give you the blessing. So yeah, the devil does want you to romanticize everything because then you won't be understanding the lesson. And you need the lesson to elevate, to get to the level that you want to be at. It has to do with your work, right? Occupation. Whoever this person is that, that God sent to you and used, and he used them as an example, you look through this person's work, you'll see they like to do probably even corruption to get what they want. Too much power. Too much passion, too much ambition, strong desires. When you notice yourself, because this, this happens to all of us. When you notice yourself conspiring and orchestrating and manipulating to get what you want, snap out of it. Call yourself out. 
when you find yourself in that state of mind where you're plotting to do something deceitful, snap out of it. When you find yourself in that state of mind where you are completely tunnel vision to the point where you're not even considering how you are affecting other people by your behavior, your actions, your decisions, snap yourself out of it. Because you can become very dangerous in that kind of energy, in that state of mind. Mm. Wow. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. Yes, it all has to do with your work, occupation, how you work, your approach, your intention, the energy behind what you're doing, the force, how you work. Look, even judication. The, judica the judicator is someone who is in a position of power, influence, leadership. They make decisions that affects other people. Imagine making a decision when, when you are in a state of strong desire. Oh, you're going to make reckless decisions that'll end up suffering other people. And you may not even care because it's what got you what you want. But at the expense of other people. If God is going to put you, which I strongly believe he is, whosoever you are, if he is going to put you in a position of power, influence, status, leadership, you have to be very careful with your actions. Because our actions are what lead to the decisions that we make. Right? Our actions lead to the decision that we make. And if you make a bad decision while being a leader, your people will suffer. Your followers will suffer. Wow. You ask God for something. You pray to God for something. He heard that prayer. He wants to answer it. But first, you have to be prepared for it. Wow. Pay attention. God is showing you. Look at the magnifying glass. Take a closer look. You could have actually been in a house with different people and you were meant to study what you were being shown. This house here could represent a place that you were at. This could even be work. This could be a place where you work. It could be a place where you live. Take it how it resonates. But there was a lot going on in this place, this building here that you're meant to be learning from, studying, your magnifying glass. Be insightful. Think of it this way, right? The Lord is the master. We are his students. Just think of it that way. The Lord is the teacher. We are his students. We are to learn from him. So pay attention. This is a very powerful message here. It's going to get you focused. Because the truth is, uh, 38 being the bridge, the truth is, Behind these two forces, right? The red and the blue. I'll touch on that later. 38 is the bridge. The bridge is all about overcoming difficulties. 
Once you learn this lesson, you will come together with this blessing. God will grant you your heart's desire. 24 is the heart. The heart is all about coming together. It's union. Once you learn, 39 is the dice, taking chances. Once you learn this lesson, it's like God's going to deem you ready. And then he gives you the blessing. It finally happens. Whatever you've been praying for, waiting for, it finally happens. But it's as if you have to cross over from one side to the other. Okay? It's as if you have to cross over. See the bridge? You cross over the bridge. Once you can get to the other side, you've arrived into your new beginning your next destination. And the blessing is given to you. But right now you're struggling a little bit, okay? With the poverty card. Watch how you respond to things. Watch how you respond to things. Your approach. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. Mature woman. There are times where you are not to take action immediately. But rather, be like the mature woman, the, um, the empress. Right? What do I mean by that? There are times where something will happen and you're not meant to take action immediately. But you are meant to think, contemplate, plan, right? Gain some insight. And then there are times where you are to embody the mature man energy, which is the emperor, that alpha, assertive, taking charge, getting things under control. See? Temperance, balance. You have community. Community. High honor. Number two, the clover, luck. I do believe that there are levels to this. It's as if there are a series of tests. And I can tell you what's coming next. What's coming is I see you probably even moving into a new community or a new environment. Okay, whether you're relocating homes, right, moving to a new home, a new job, it's a new setting, a new environment in some way, shape, or form. That's what I see in your near future. And it is a promotion, high honor. So it does look like you've been passing some, some of the tests here. This is the next level that you're being promoted to, right? High honor is all about promotions and elevations. Number two is the clover. The clover is luck and happiness. Maybe it's an upgrade. It's a promotion, of course. A new environment, a new setting. Yeah, you have message of concern. God is putting you in a new setting. Or he will. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, a new setting. Look at the house. Wow. The house is back out. 
the house is representing some sort of place that you will be in, okay, during this next chapter. And there are a lot that you're supposed to see in this place, a lot that you're supposed to learn in this place. And it's a part of your transformation, your growth. Tell us more. Message of concern. House. 36. Now it's going to be very intense. 36 is the, the cross. It's going to be pretty intense. It is. So, you know, just brace yourself. New level, new devil, right? 26 being the book of knowledge. That's what you need to know. New level, new devil. Now, what else can you know about this? It's going to be intense, but you will persevere. Number five is the tree. The tree represents health and longevity. You're going to get very, very strong. It's intense. The more pressure... The more weight a person carries, the stronger they get. It's like, you know, going to the gym every day and lifting weights. Well, the more weight you lift, right, the more buff, muscular, right, stronger you get. So it will be intense. You may even be feeling like you're carrying a lot of pressure, a lot of weight, but it's making you strong, long-lasting. The tree, health and longevity. Wow. Tell us more. Number 37 is the clock. Hmm. Number seven is the snake. Number 11 is the broom and the whip. So 37 being the clock, number 7 being the snake. The snake is someone who will betray you. The snake represents a betrayer. I do see, I see you meeting someone during this, this next chapter here, this next level. I see you meeting someone who is super duper passionate, but they are deceitful. Okay. Do you, okay. Do you remember, I was going to say something and then I was like, I'll get to that later. Okay. Here's me getting to that. These two forces, the two parties, right? The red, the blue, those, those are forces. Those are spirits, right? Every time we take action, we are using some sort of force, some sort of energy to take action. Another word for energy is force, like F-O-R-C-E. Another word for energy is force, like, like in physics. So behind every action we take, there is a force that allows us to take that action. Another word for force is a spirit. You ever seen someone do something and you're like, mm, that person has a jealous spirit? Because it's the way they move, the way they navigate, the energy that they carry. You can sense jealousy from their energy because really there is a spirit. There is a spirit behind that energy, that force. It all connects. This is actually one of the ways that evil spirits can influence people to do bad things. 
I, I, let me see if I can give an, an example. Okay, because this person here who you are going to meet or cross paths with, they are, they are, God is using them as an example of what not to be. I see this individual being extremely determined to get what they want. Number 11 is the whip, the broom, which represents conflict and strife. They're so determined to get what they want that there's something scandalous that they end up doing to get what they want. Whatever this scandalous thing is that they end up doing, it causes another person, maybe this is even you, it causes another person delays, a hold up. 37 is the, the clock, which is all about time. It's like they would be willing to sabotage someone to get what they want, compromising another person to have their way. You're going to see it. Yeah, 33 is the key. Discoveries. Maybe this is actually what someone has done to you or will do to you. It's a timeline. Some of you, this is what will happen. Others of you, this is what did happen. And some of you, this is what is going to happen. Wanting something so badly that you're willing to, you know, interfere in a way that it, it sabotages another person. Because I see what they did here. This fiery individual, that red energy, or you can say that red, it's a spirit behind this person. And spirits come from two, two sources, light or darkness. Or you can even see it in a religious way. The kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. Some spirits come from God, other spirits come from the devil. Which is why I said earlier, this is one of the biggest ways that demonic spirits can influence people. One of the biggest ways that demonic spirits influence people is through the mind. When you are so determined to get something that you start taking action that negatively affects another person. At, at that point, you realize that there is some sort of evil entity that is influencing you to do that. The strong desire, the lust, the overload of passion. Number one is the messenger. You're going to see something very, very terrible here. An individual who is so passionate to get what they want. They desire something that they're willing to cause conflict. Number 11 is the broom and the whip. They're willing to cause conflict and drama to get what they want. But it's in a way, it could even be that they're competing to get what they want. But it's in a way where they end up delaying another person, delaying something here. And then number one is the message. Number one is the message. It looks like they interfered with a message that, that was supposed to be for someone. Maybe they didn't want this person. This could have been you, that they did it to, that they're doing it to or that they will do it to, or it could be another person. Remember, it's like you're watching and you're learning from the others around you. God is using the other people, people as an example. Number one is the messenger. There was a message for someone, maybe a letter, news. This person, I believe, tried to interfere with that message being received and it delayed that person. 
because that person did not receive the message or some sort of important message. I feel like it was probably stolen. 23. The letter was stolen. The document was stolen. The message was stolen. 23 is the mice, which represents a loss, destruction, devastation. They interfered. They interfered. They disrupted something. Distant horizons. Mm -hmm. Distant horizons, marriage. House. Hmm. So the distant horizon card is like... Your dreams, your yearnings, your fantasies. Marriage, house. Marriage is an official agreement, a contractual agreement, where you have commitments to a person, place, or thing. Then you have the house. see loss someone gets sabotaged here it's like they were supposed to receive some sort of news message it gets interfered with it's either stolen or destroyed like steal the letter destroy it whatever and so it prevents them from doing what is needed to be done because they don't have the information to do it look it's a letter 27 is literally the letter card. So in a way, it holds them back. It holds them back from doing what they're supposed to do. And didn't I say it earlier? It's like when you get in that state of strong desire, you start doing reckless things to get what you want, which ends up compromising, harming another person. And that's exactly what happened. That's a lesson there. It's a lesson for what you should what you should not be. This is what you shouldn't be like when God does position you in that place of leadership, power, influence. You have coffin. You have 35. The anchor. You have wealthy man. The coffin represents endings. It's like the death card in the other classic tarot decks. The coffin is endings, endings that could bring change. The ending, the coffin could even represent something that's like sealed, right? Once that coffin closes shut, it's sealed, it's done with. 30, so it's like an ending. 35 is the anchor. The anchor talks about stability, security, something that's secured. Then you have the wealthy man. Yes. It looks like this actually has to do with a wealthy man. So the news that was interfered with and this person didn't receive it, and maybe it was you that it happened to, the news is about a wealthy man here, number 13. See him in his suit and tie. Then the coffin is here. I wonder if this is someone who did pass away. 35 is the um, the anchor. The anchor. 
that's what the that's what the news was about that you didn't receive. So number seven is the message, the message, the message. Then look, 42 is the compass. I think you had some sort of affair to take care of. You had some sort of matter to take care of, but I feel like it was at a distance. And maybe the person who interfered with it didn't want you to know about it, didn't want you to have to go so far away. So they hid it, they stole it, they destroyed the letter, something like that. Let me see here. That's exactly what they did. Thirty four is the fish. Hmm. The fish. Yeah, the fish represents abundance and trade. Then you have the gift. So why does, you know, why did this person interfere with you receiving this news? Well, they don't want you to go and attend, you know, attend to another matter. That really feels like it's at a distance. They don't want you to attend to another matter. They kind of really want to keep you in a particular place or setting or environment so that they will get a greater chance of actually receiving something from you. 34 is the, the fish. The fish is abundance and resources, trade and commerce. It could be this person wants an opportunity from you and you know they're competing with any other um, any other person who they feel also wants an opportunity from you. They're competing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Main male. Yeah, so you see how main male is number one and then number 18. It's like they want you to commit to them. It doesn't have to be romantically. Maybe it is. It could be romantic. It could be platonic. It could be work-wise. But I do feel like there's some sort of opportunity that they want from you or a person. And that's why they are behaving so recklessly. But it's in a way that's sabotaging the very person who they want an opportunity from. They want this person to, to choose them, commit to them, number one, main male. But it's in such a selfish way that's compromising or preventing this person from attending to other important matters. Like other important matters, like someone who literally passed away. I'm telling you, someone passed away and maybe that's what the news was about. The news that was interfered with or blocked, someone had passed away. I feel like it's an important matter, but I feel like the news didn't reach this person, whether it's you or someone else. Eight is the coffin. Again, the letter. I feel like this person, and then look, it's connected to something with money. 34 is the fish, abundance, resources, trade, commerce. Maybe the person who passed away, the person who passed away was a wealthy man. I said that. Okay. Maybe you had some role. Look, family ring. Maybe this is a relative or someone who is like a family member to you. I feel like you had some sort of role, duty, obligation, something important to do. That's what the news was for, but I don't feel like you received it successfully. Oops, I don't. Because then you would have, look, because then, <laughs> then you would have had to travel and that's what they don't. This is something that's at a distance. You would, you would have to travel 42 in order to come together with that other matter pertaining to the death of someone and they don't want you to travel. It's like this person wants to secure, 35 is the anchor, they wanna secure an opportunity with you. 
very selfishly to the point where they really want to kind of restrain you, keep you kind of locked up and bound. Maybe they feel like if you spread your wings and fly and you go elsewhere, you'll find you'll end up choosing something else, someone else. You know, it's very selfish. They want to hold you back. They do not want you to know who this wealthy man is or what the matter is pertaining to this wealthy man who has passed away. They don't want you to know about it. They want to keep you where they want you. They want to have a strong hold on you where it'll benefit them. It's like manipulating things to go in their favor, which is what I said at the very beginning of this reading. When you are in that strong desire where you start conspiring, manipulating, and deceiving to get what you want. But it's in a way that, you know, compromises another person. Lovers. mature man expectation yeah you're you were supposed to i feel like you were it has to do with travels i feel like it's at a distance um he's showing up as the mature man first he showed up as the wealthy man um now he's showing up as the mature man and expectation and then family room it could be that this person's waiting to talk to you but it's like you're not they're not receiving correspondence from you Look, they're at a distance. The compass, y'all, keeps on showing up. There's a... So, okay, so these are two different people. The wealthy man is who passed away. This is the matter you were supposed to attend to, but I feel like it's at a distance. You would have to travel. There is a, there is a mature man who I believe was the one who sent you the communication and has been waiting for your response, for correspondence. He's waiting for you. He doesn't know what's going on with you. He's worried. He's not, you know, he's not, you're not responding, but it's because you didn't receive his communication. Someone here blocked it, interfered with it. I can't make, look, thief, they stole it. They went through your communications, whether it's an email that they deleted or a phone call that they maybe try to intercept or a letter, mail that they stole, thief. Look, the mice. The mice represents a loss. The letter was lost. The mice also represents destruction and devastation. Maybe they ripped it up, deleted it. Mm. This is terrible. But this is an example of what you shouldn't be like when God establishes you, you know, in that position. Main female, sudden wealth. It looks like the news was about, the news was about something that's going to bring you. The news that was interfered with, again, number one, the messenger, the news that was interfered with has to do with money, something valuable. And then main female. Wow. It's good news. You're probably making a discovery about something that uh, a, a, what a deceased one had left for you. I feel like that's what it is, but it's missing. It's like the missing piece of the puzzle. Yep. Yeah. I feel like they try to reach you. 43, trial and error. 43 is the labyrinth. Trial and error, trial and error. It's a missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and someone is like purposely blocking it. It's a trial and error game reaching you. They, they tried reaching you to deliver this news, but someone kept on blocking it. So it's like 
they had to try again. They're like, okay, then we'll, we'll come tomorrow and see, you know, if they can deliver it. They come tomorrow, it's blocked. Or we'll send it this way. We'll send the communication this way. Blocked. We'll send it that way. Blocked. Like trial and error. Because look, 23 is the mice. The, the news is being interfered with. It's being blocked, is being destroyed, is being stolen. The mice shows up again. A loss, destruction, devastation. And that is what it is. Toil and labor. Toil and labor. Let me see here before we conclude the reading. Toil and labor is work. I feel like all of these things are supposed to happen because these are lessons. These are experiences. There's a lot of preparation that goes into receiving this blessing. This is the kind of toil and labor is like monotonous work. The kind, the kind of work that doesn't bring you any fulfillment, but you just got to do it anyways, you know. 31 is the, the sun, illumination, things being revealed. Family room. That's what you need to know. Or something pertaining to your family, a family, family friend. I just revealed it to you even though it's hidden. You never received it. You know, it's like you never received the news, but I just revealed it to you. That's why the sun is here. Illumination. It, it came to light. You have fortune. You have great fortune. I do feel like something was left for you. I do. You even have on the back of the deck 30, which is the Lily's card. And the Lily's card can represent peace and serenity, but it can also represent a parent or an elder. I mean, a parent, yeah, a parent and elder. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm pretty sure this reading is super duper long, but um, I hope that it was um, informative. I hope it brought you great truth, clarity, and confirmation. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to support the channel. If you're interested in connecting with me more, you're always welcome to check out my website and book a private reading with me. Take care, my beautiful people. I'll put all my info in the description box. Many blessings to you.